Hi everyone, this is Hannah with another OneFlow hack and today we're going to be talking about data fields. Data fields are a way for you to be able to automatically map repeated information throughout your contract. So in other words, if in a contract your counterparty's name is repeated tons of times, you could add a data field, type in the counterparty's name into the data field, and it will map that information to all the other locations where that name is needed. We're going to show you how to set this up, but first I want to show you an example of what this looks like in practice. So jumping into an example here in a contract, if I scroll down, you can always identify a data field source or where you're putting in the information by this little link icon. And then where that information is going to get mapped is identified by having it highlighted, or if you hover over it, it will also let you know what data field you're looking at. As you can see in this contract, there are tons of repetitions of this name, and so it'd be really time consuming for you to fill all of those out yourself. But instead here, when I type in Hannah Johansson as the counterparty name, you'll now notice that all of those yellow highlighted sections are gone. And wherever that data field was linked to now says Hannah Johansson. And again, if you hover, hover over it, it will still say what the data field is. All right, so let's set up data fields. We're actually going to start by going into extensions. So go ahead and click admin and extensions. In extensions, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here and click into template groups. Template groups are a way for you to be able to organize your different data fields. So if you have different data fields for different templates, different teams, if you're using data fields for integrations, then you can use template groups to organize the different data fields that you have. I'm going to start a new template group called a brand new template group for this hack video. You can add an optional description as well. And I'm going to click into that template group. Now I'm going to go into data fields and click add a data field. Now I know that in the contract that I'm going to be sending, I'm going to be repeating the name of the counterparty a bunch. So I'm going to call this name of counterparty. You can also add a description, a placeholder, a value, or an external key, but really you, the only thing that you have to add is the name. If you're using this for an integration, you will have to add an external key. This is the way that the integrations communicate with each other and can recognize which fields they're transferring over. This is also where a value would come into play if you're using this for the integration with Zapier, for example. But again, if you're using this just to map repeated information, you just need to include the name. You can also add a description if uh, you want to make it very clear to your colleagues what this data field is referring to or the placeholder. This is the text that would come up in that highlighted section. But right now I'm just going to call it name of counterparty. Another bit of repeated information I know is going to come up is the date of when this contract is going to become legitimate. So I'm going to add the name here. And then let's go ahead and add this into a template. So we're going to go to templates, the template library where you can select from different pre-created uh, contract styles that OneFlow has created. And I'm going to go into NDA for media agency. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually activate the template group. So go to the right here to template group, a brand new template group for this hack video. And now it's going to recognize that those data fields that we set up name of counterparty and date are going to be available to use in this contract. Now I'm going to call this field counterparty name remove this description and I'm going to add the data field name of counterparty. So now it knows that this form field with this link here is going to be the source of that repeated information. I'm going to change this one here to date and I'm going to add the data field for this one to have the source date. So now that we have the sources put in place, I'm going to add in where this information is going to be mapped to. So in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and click control F to 
to disclosing party. I know that this one is repeated a ton. And anytime I want this name to appear or take the place of disclosing party, I'm going to click the three dots to the corner, click insert data field, and select which source of information this is going to populate. So there you go. Now you can see that name of counterparty, the results from that are going to be mapped into there. We can go through and add these to all the other ones, but for the sake of our time here, uh, I'm going to jump to the other example of adding the date. Uh, but as you can imagine, you can go through on the control F and map it to all those different areas. Uh, now let's say I want the date here as of date. And for date, instead, we're going to map it to the date. All right, now let's see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and write in Hannah Johansson. And I'm going to put it in the date of the 26th of October. And as you can see, our date is now populated and my name has been included for the counterparty here as well. So that is how you add data fields into your contract. You may already be familiar with data fields, especially if you're using one of our integrations because data fields are really the backbone of how our integrations communicate with each other. It's how, for example, if you're using HubSpot and two-way sync and you have information that is mapped from the contract of things that your counterparties filled out and send it back into HubSpot, the data fields are the ways for you to be able to say, this is the information I want mapped here, and this is the information I want mapped back to here. But I think that this is really important too, to show that you don't need to have integrations to be able to utilize data fields and to be able to map repeated information. And even if you have integrations, you can use data fields in other ways as well. So I hope that you found this helpful and stay tuned for other hack videos and other ways to use data fields as well. Thanks so much.